Is that fucking Ocelot? Lolly Lule Lo. Lolly Lule Lo. Lolly Lule Lo. That really is Ocelot. My bad. I think you don't like games out right now. Bro. I like fighting games. You would not be here if I wasn't playing them. The fuck? Hello? All, it's just that all the other fighting games right now are trash. So, like, you play Street Fighter 6, that shit's trash. You play fucking Grand Blue, that shit's trash. You play, like, Dragon Ball Fighters is fucking garbage online at the moment, even with the rollback patch. So that shit don't even work. MK1 is unfinished. All of the games competitively suck ass. Every top player complains about them. Like, what, like... It's not like the old days. The last, like, good Street Fighter game was Street Fighter fucking 4. It was Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 5 was trash until the final season. Then it became a good game. The only problem with Street Fighter 5 is that you go play it now. Luke is broken. Luke is actually godlike in Street Fighter 5 now. So even if you go back, there's no other patches that's going to change that game now anymore. That shit's going to forever be Luke the game. Luke the game, V shift the game. So Street Fighter 5 is just not going to be as good as Street Fighter 4. And Street Fighter 4, while it had bullshit like Elena and Iryu, the game was still good. Grand Blue, fucking 66L, fucking, they ruined the neutral in Grand Blue. They literally ruined the fucking neutral in Grand Blue. Grand Blue, it was slow paced, everyone was enjoying that shit. Then they added all these dumb fucking mechanics. They added fucking stupid ass overdrive, tactical move, rush and shift just to copy Street Fighter V or whatever the fuck. And then Grand Blue Rising came out. They took out all of that shit, but then put in Raging Strike. They put in fucking, uh, they put in Raging Strike, Guard Cancel plus six, six, six L. So all offense, right? Like, Zoners can't even play the fucking game. You try to play mid range, and then you got near doing this. You got you got near doing this. And then ultimate skills like literally skipping neutral and then refunding your meter back. Yeah, man. No. I think I think a lot of things made Grand Blue fucking trash to play, and a lot of the top players don't fucking like it. So that shit sucks. Do I have to talk about Street Fighter Six again and how that game is dumb? Cause you literally try to play neutral and then someone just does this. Someone literally just does this and drive rushes in. Someone literally fucking taps two buttons and they get parry all the time. You finally win the neutral and you still have to worry about them on defense to the point where they could win the game off of it. And then everyone fucking complains and says, yo, you have no neutral. You don't play no neutral, Sonic Soul. I will literally fucking walk back to fucking full screen to w wait for the drive rush, try to whiff punish it and trade with your fucking normal. And don't try to tell me that Grand Blue is doing great right now. No, the fuck it's not. The only two games, the only two fighting games that are really good right now are like Street Fighter and Tekken. Honest, like honestly. And Street Fighter ain't even that good competitively. We're just talking on a, like a sales standpoint. It's literally just Tekken and Street Fighter. So, I mean, nah. If you're gonna ask me like, do I like fighting games? I like fighting games. I don't like what they've become, though. And a lot of other players will tell you the same thing. I don't like what they've become. And you're not going to fucking sit here and tell me, oh, man, but why is everyone winning and you're not winning? Just because they're winning doesn't mean they like that shit. You go to any fucking fighting game stream and it's the same shit. They will all tell you. So let's just not. The only people I don't see complaining as much, actually, is Tekken. It's not that fighting games are too easy. They're making them... 
they're making them accessible for newer players to play of course but they're made so that way they're it's it's more like a spectacle and they want people to, like that watch it to to fucking get hype over it and they want more people to play which is good right but i wouldn't necessarily say that they're easy like it's very like it's nuanced that's what i'm trying to tell y'all it's nuanced so to really explain it to really really explain it to you the games have changed from being easy uh not easy the game has changed from being like hard execution but easy to understand to like n no execution or little execution and hard to be consistent right so it was easier to be consistent in older games if you were good right but it required a lot of hard execution right so the execution barrier was higher in older games but it was also hard to be consistent due to the execution barrier whereas now the execute i'm not talking about one frame links by the way we could talk about one frame links but i'm not even mentioning i'm talking about like just playing the game like there are games where like where where you do a combo the longer the combo goes the harder the combo is to do so like we're talking about like hit stun scaling deterioration shit like that the, the longer your combo was the harder the combo was to do and it wasn't even about one frame links it was legit like the harder it is the harder the longer the combo the harder it is to do it or like like if you think about like blaze blue or like guilty gear or like uh like the more kusoge games hulk to no ken alpha three we could say it's not kuso gay or Kuso. you got infinites in that game like my point is back in the day execution was king right if you were really good with, with your execution then everything else became easy right and it was easier to be consistent as a result due to your execution now you don't need huge execution to do things anymore but the games are harder to be consistent because the mechanics are volatile, right? The mechanics are volatile. That's not to say that old school games didn't have volatile mechanics. Like CVS2 had roll cancel. So you would literally fight Sakura and Sakura would do, Sak Sakura would do fucking roll cancel Tatsu and it would be fucking invincible, right? It, it's like, a, it would be like a, a old school drive rush, right? Or like, you know, it, it's not really much it's not really much to fucking like do short short side lock assist in marvel 2 and then guard break your opponent on incoming and then they just die anyway right like obviously old school games had bullshit and obviously old school game old school games were more like defined on like how dumb the game was built because fighting game developers were just like coming out and trying to just try everything you know they, there were no patches back in the day either for a lot of the shit too so whatever bugs whatever shit the game had you had to hold that shit forever so that means like they could have fixed marvel 2 to not have like the guard break on incoming if you hit somebody airborne they could have fixed like the roll cancel bullshit in cvs2 but that was back in the day where patches didn't exist you had to just wait for the next new game now fighting games come out we get patches and shit obviously but the core game still remains the same oh you got drive rush you got drive parry you've got heat heat engager which to me is not as bad as all these other mechanics you've got fucking you know sparking you've got all these like it's either comeback mechanics or fucking like dumb shit integrated in the game that everyone fucking gets to use and it's so hard to deal with right so that's why to me again i think games fighting games have went from hard to execute hard to execute which equals hard to be consistent to not as hard to execute hard to be consistent for the next battle so fighting games yeah they i think it's easy but that to me is the reason why they're easy that to me is the reason why they've become easier it's not it's not it's i guess the best way to describe it too another way is like it's hard to execute right easy to execute like hard to execute for older games easy to execute for newer games but both are hard to be consistent 
because the consistency relied on your execution in the older days. Now your consistency relies on how do you deal with all these mechanics? How can you stop all these powerful mechanics that are overbearing? You know? That that is like the difference. Yeah, like KOF 2002, oh, oh, yo, yeah, KOF 2002, UM, right? Those combos are hard. I played Orochi Shermi in that game. I played Orochi Shermi. I played uh, Vanessa. I played uh, what's what's the 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 Kent the, the I forgot what's her name. I, I don't remember. She she's got blue hair. She's like to, she she knows Toto or whatever her name is. She was really good. I don't fucking remember her name because it's been so long. But I know that I played Vanessa and Orochi Shermi in that game. No, not Leona. It's not Leona. Kasumi, there we go. Kasumi. Yes. Kasumi. That's who I'm talking about. That bitch, you know, she was stupid. She was really good in that game. So I played Kasumi. I played, um, yeah, I played Kasumi, Vanessa, Orochi, Orochi Shermi. But I wasn't really good, right? Then I played KOF 15, right? And because I knew everything from KOF 2002 UM with Vanessa and with Shermi, I was godlike right i was godlike but not only did the legacy skill carry over from that but then the game is easy the game was fucking getting easy like all i had to do was just learn the kof fundamental shit and now anytime i touch someone with shermy i could just play with one hand with shermy go and fucking do like 80 percent for no fucking execution no kof 15 definitely got easy you know how hard it was to play 2002 um shit was not easy we're talking like max mode conversions we're talking about shit like that you it's not hard to do that in kof 15 that's why i said it's not it's not hard it's not i played vanessa i can tell you that it's it i i know i'm telling you that kof 2002 um kof 13 those games were executionally harder than kof 15 that's what i'm trying to tell you right like it's not about the it's not about like it's not about oh man hard to like yeah you have more leeway in kof 15 it's what i'm speaking about is not like oh hard to win because that's hard to be consistent right and fighting games in general are gonna be naturally hard to be consistent but it's gonna be determinate on certain factors which is like again like i said before if it's harder to do fucking combos in fucking the old school games it's gonna be harder to be consistent because you need to execute that shit and it requires very precise things pre precise timing you know you know all this precision it still requires precision in newer games to do like certain things like for tekken for instance you have to make sure they're on access so your combo has to be proper for street fighter it depends on like the juggle point system and if you use drive rush to extend the combo or not right but they don't necessarily ask you to be like oh well the longer the combo goes the harder it is to actually perform the combo and finish or like oh the, the combo is like they got like fucking one frame links and shit which to me like i don't care about one frame links i don't give a fuck about that what i care about more is like for instance not just one frame links but one frame setups so like zato in like eddie in the older guilty gear games in accent core plus r ogawa was really good for for playing zato because he was one of the few that could do uh the unblockables the unblockables with zato that required like one frame timing or like really really difficult timing and that and those unblockables are fucking cheap but if you can do them you can do them right and that's what separated you from ogawa right is how much you could execute these things but if everyone can fucking do it if everyone can do that shit then what what does that mean or sakonoko sakonoko playing fucking bb hood and vampire savior no one can the reason they were called bb hood sako combos was because he was the only one that could do it no one else could do it the way he does it right we're not like i don't mean to be cheesy and giving titles but it really was that way back in the day the reason you knew sako was because he was godlike as execution
Like he was actually OD because of his uh, Boletta, his BB hood, uh, you know, dash one frame link combos. You know, that shit is not easy. We're not even talking about like linking. We're talking about like doing dash cancels while jabbing to get the infinite. It's very difficult, right? It took a lot of like sweat and execution to do that shit. Now, the sweat comes not in the combo, the sweat comes in the fucking like consistency. Yeah, he was OD. No, he was OD. Because you can't go and play Vampire Savior and do what Sako does. You can't. I don't I have not seen a BB Hood player do what Sako does. I haven't. But then again, you know, Vampire Savior is more underground now. You know? I'm not saying that no one can do it, but it takes a lot of years to do it. You know? It takes a lot of years. And people saw that shit. People saw that shit with Sako. So it wasn't like... You know, it wasn't fucking... It wasn't fucking like, oh man, it was underground. Like, it, he went to SBO and he played BB Hood. Like, you saw that shit if you had the tapes or the DVDs. And then you tried to do it and you couldn't fucking do it. You know? Yeah. Like, back in the day, you could look at, like... Yeah, you could... Back in the day, you could look at, like, the way people played characters. So, like, I could tell the difference between Smug's Dudley and someone else's Dudley. I could tell the difference between I Eyes Dudley... I, I Like, I Eyes Dudley and, uh... Infiltration, not Dudley. I can tell the difference between I I's jury and Infiltration's jury, for example. Or like I can tell the difference between like uh L. I. Joe's Sagat or Bonchan Sagat. Or like, you know, like you could tell the difference between player and player styles just off of what they would go for, what they would do based on their limits as a person, right? Now everyone has to play the same way. Everyone has to play the same fucking way, man. You gotta play fucking Luke if you play Street Fighter 6. You gotta play JP. You gotta play fucking uh, Ken. You have to play those characters if you want to win. Because they abuse the shit the most. You gotta play DJ. And everyone plays the same, bro. Everyone. Yo, fucking DJ, it don't matter who or what the person is doing. You know the moment they do drive rush jab, they're winning. You know the moment they do driver's jab, they're winning. Right? And then... And then you have, like, jury players that just do drive rush all day or fireball in the drive rush. They don't... Like, no one plays differently. Everyone is going to choose the same strategy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So everyone chooses the same strategy. What is difficult is for a player to be consistent, right? It's to be consistent within the mechanics of the game. So how can you stop the jury player from drive rushing at you 5 million times every time? How can you like play around someone doing parry every time on their wake up? How can you stop them from doing drive impact randomly in every situation? How do you adapt to that? How can you consistently stop that shit? Instead of, can you consistently perform this combo? Can you consistently perform this setup in high pressure situations? Can you consistently, like, you know, they, they wanted to create it so that way it's more interactive. But by doing that, they've homogenized the gameplay. They wanted to make the game more interactive for players, right? So they wanted to make it so that way, like, Oh man, no one is barred from doing like an unblockable. No one is barred from doing like the sick combo or the sick setup. No one is barred from doing these cool things. But you are barred by your execution, not your execution. You are barred by your consistency in being able to stop key things. Can you consistently stop this person from parrying? Can you consistently stop this person from fucking drive rushing at you? Can you consistently stop this person from just throwing out heat smash? Can you consistently stop this person from doing 6-6-L? Can you consistently stop this person from doing ultimate skills? Right? Like, 
that's where it's gone to. It's not like, can you consistently perform X action, Y action for your character better than other people? Can you consistently perform this, this like, this execution? Now it's, can you deal with these mechanics? And can you deal with it consistently? And as a result, it homogenizes the gameplay. And obviously in fighting games, it's all about like trying to answer questions that your opponent is giving you. It's all about that. It's all about like, how do you fight? Like, how do you exactly fight the person in front of you? And can you answer the questions that they're giving you? And it's usually based around the character too. Now, most games, and Tekken is the outlier because it's legacy. So Tekken actually, despite the heat smash and stuff, still remains, you know, and still keeps integrity to its identity. But all the other games, you know, Strive, Street Fighter VI, you know, Grand Blue, they all are trying to be like each other. And they all are playing towards the mechanics of the game more than they are like the actual unique characters. So all the characters are homogenized. All the play styles are homogenized. And, and that's the point I'm making. Fighting games did not become like easier to win in. They didn't. Yeah, somebody could randomly take a round from you, but you're not beating the best players who've been playing for years. It doesn't matter if they make the games old or new. And then and then all you're doing is just making the, the legacy players who've been playing fighting games for years feel like ass because now they're going to just randomly lose one game to somebody they shouldn't have lost to. But they'll still win, right? So it won't matter. But now they're giving the, the newer players like, you know, some extra shit, you know? They're giving the new players extra shit so that way they have a fighting chance. They feel like they have a fighting chance when they don't. You get what I'm saying? Like, it, it's... That's what it's really boiling down to. It's accessibility through homogenization, right? That That's really what it is. And I hope that people understand my point. It, it's just, that's how modern fighting games have gone to. That's why I say, like, the last good fighting games have been, like, Street Fighter 4 or, like, Marvel 3, Ultimate Marvel 3. People still play that game. Um, sure, there are comeback mechanics in those games, like Ultras and X-Factor, but not everybody played exactly the same. They, yes, they chose the same strategy, but you could tell the difference between, like, Ray Ray Sentinel and, and F-Champ Sentinel. You know, like, you could tell the difference between, like, Chris G's Morgan and like Ryan LV's Morgan, or you could choose, you could see the difference between like those players characters, but now you can't anymore. Yeah, Blaze, Blaze Blue, Central Fiction, that's another good old school game, right? That's another good old school game. I, I can't believe I'm calling Central Fiction old school now, by the way, but it's true. Like a lot of those games within the 2009 to 2015 era. So from Street Fighter 4 to Street Fighter 5, a lot of those games that came out, they're all like, you know, they're that's what they are. They, they're all like towards that older style that I mentioned. Whereas if you go to play Street Fighter 5 onward, Street Fighter 5, Dragon Ball Fighters, all these newer games... 1000% you're gonna get that newer style. You're gonna get that newer like, oh man, like we're gonna give this this new player like a chance. They'll still lose, but they're gonna take like a game off of you just cuz. And that's fine. It's fine if you want new players to feel welcome and shit, but like you're really just fucking up the, the competitive scene that way. And what I mean by that is you're just gonna make the competitive players just not like the game. They're gonna they're gonna win, right? But you're just gonna you're not gonna make them like the game. No, I didn't forget about Marvel 2. I'm saying you if you play from the 09 era, that's the last era. From 09 to 15, that's the last era where the type of games that I'm describing, where it was hard execution, hard to be consistent, right? And a lack of homogenized gameplay. I'm telling you, like, you're gonna notice that. You're, you're going to notice the difference from those games to now. If you go older than that, older than 2009, then you're going to find that shit to the highest extreme. If there's like a chart 
you know, I don't have an editor. I just make all these videos on my own. So I don't really have an editor to do the cool animations and shit. But if I did, right, then I would have like a video or, or like I would have like a chart, right? And it would be like a, you would see like a bell curve. And in that bell curve, it would be like, or like a graph. I don't, I don't know how to exactly like picture it, but basically the older you go, the higher the execution, the higher the consistency rate relative to execution. The later you go, like the more modern you go to the, to the future, to where we are now, the lower the execution, the harder the, the consistency. Like it's going to be more based around like the mechanics than it will be like the execution. You know? It's going to be based around your consistency with dealing with modern shit as opposed to dealing with your execution and finding your own style right like that that is like the chart that i would make but unfortunately I, you know i don't have a fucking youtube editor so you just have to visualize it on your own oh man someone's playing fucking lily oh my god i'm about to fucking come anyway that was just my like that was just my thoughts man you know and this shit fell off that was just my thoughts you know That's my thought. Somebody asked if I liked fighting games. Somebody asked if, like, you know, I was, you know, what do I think about fighting games? That's where I think fighting games have gone to. And if you like fighting games, you like fighting games, man. But you can't d deny the changes that they've made. So round one. that's all I got to say about that. I think fighting games are fun no matter what version of the game you're playing. Like, personally, if you ask me, I think fighting games are fun no matter, like, no matter what era you play. Just so long as you play with friends and you have a good time, you know, you're not trying to play competitively, you know? As long as you're not trying to play competitively, then you won't have to deal with the fucking stress of the shit that I know. Because if you play competitively, you have to worry about this stuff. This stuff matters. Like, if you play competitive fighting games, because I've done it, right? You have to worry about those factors, those nuances. So, we're not talking about, like, you and little Jimmy or this lobby that's going on right now. We're not talking about this fucking lobby that's going on right now where like little jimmy is playing with lily and fapping while he's playing dragonov who's fucking like you know with his army gear and shit thinking he's fucking lolly lule low we're not talking about like random ass you know playing games and shit we're talking about like competitive high level you paid money to go to an event from across the world and shit and you're trying to fucking win money and you're trying to like win like tournaments and shit that's the context we're talking about. And if you think that we're talking casually, oh man, well you can have fun wherever you want. You can even have fun in competition. Go ahead, but you're gonna lose. I'm, I'm telling you, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose if you just think that way. Cause yeah, you can have fun regardless, competition or not, but you have to still recognize that those factors with fighting games exist that I mentioned, so. That's all I really wanted to say about that. So. Cause the truth is, you may think you're having fun, but the person who's next to you is probably playing cause they're like, damn, I really just spent like $3,000 to go to this fucking tournament to only win like $200 back or like $1,000 back. I don't even make my money back. And right, I have to win for my sponsors. I have to win so that way people can see like the brands so that people can fucking like keep my fucking, you know, keep my lights on, you know? Some people are actually doing this as their fucking career. So these are the things that they have to think about when they play the, the games that they play for fucking thousands and thousands of hours is how fucked up is this game and how has it changed from previous games to now? How do I like improve from my legacy? How do I improve from my fundamentals from older games and bring them into newer games? And what are the rules of the game that it's asking me to have? If the game has specific rules, I have to play to those specific rules. And it requires understanding what that shit is. 
It requires understanding the environment that you're playing in. So you can agree with me. You can not agree with me. I, I don't I don't care. Leave it down in the comments down below what y'all think. Um, and yeah, sub if you want to or don't. I don't care. You could like or dislike the video. I would very much appreciate it if you did either because then it would just promote it in the algorithm and people would see this shit. But this is a fun little discussion that I wanted to have. That's all.